Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and Money Color commentator. On today's show, why safety is foundational for financial security. Part two of our series on basic financial solutions with financial advisor and president of the Society for Financial Awareness, Jim Chilton. Jim, thank welcome you. to the segment. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for the first one. P R I T E, PRIT. Uh, people need, sometimes you need acronyms in your head to kind of remind you oh, yeah, protection, yeah. retirement. Uh, you need all those things. Yeah. I want to talk today about safety. Um, I said something to you in another show that you and I were on about have people, and there's people out there that have not recovered from the 2008 investment and market meltdown. I mean, that's just a fact. So people that were just coming to even or were just becoming par, right? Some people can say with clarity, if I didn't get a match from my employer, I'd really be in hot soup. Yeah. So let's walk through safety. Why is safety the cornerstone of all financial foundational thinking? Sure. Well, Will Rogers said, you know, I'd rather have first the return of my money before the return on my money. Mm -hmm. One is in hand and the other one is a projected mm -hmm. sales pitch. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you go back to 2008, I've equated, I've done millions of workshops across the country and I use a well as an example. And I said, now I want you to picture a well with a rebar step and somehow you fill into this hundred foot well and to the gate, just, it was a miracle, but you got your arm falling around one of those and you broke your arm and you're dangling 10 feet down. And you realize your arm's killing you, but you, you know, you're not dead. And now you're going to climb out of the well. Well, after 2008, the markets have came back. Mm -hmm. And people are in the well coming back. And many people are raving about that they're coming up mm -hmm. to zero. They're still three, four steps, three, four years behind. Mm -hmm. And the behavior of that mentality that denial area sets himself to go into the next well and drop mm -hmm. in, you know? And so when you talk about 2008 and talk about safety, safety is everything. Mm -hmm. Our money is the oxygen of our lives. And so when we go into retirement, we're either going to have the money or the reasons why we don't. Mm -hmm. When we invest, we should be asking ourselves before we put that money into these things, could we lose it? We're sitting in here at the top of June, right? 2017. Mm -hmm. And another terrorist attack just occurred in the great city of London mm -hmm. in one of our greatest allies in Britain. What do you think the market's doing to those people's money over there? Mm -hmm. So what I want to know is between the dot bombs and 9-11 uh, that happened in 2001, why are we acting that our country, the homeland, is not going to get hit again. What makes us think another bubble is not going to burst again? Mm -hmm. Safety should be the foundation of the consumer's portfolio, mm -hmm. and high risk ought to be somewhere out to the side, like going to Las Vegas. If I take $1,000 to go gamble in Vegas, mm -hmm. and I lose it, but Pam and I have a great time over there for the weekend, I'm not going to give the reasons why I can't pay the mortgage because mm -hmm. I set that money to the side. But people that are getting close to retirement, Steve, I've seen them gamble, take more risk with their 401k. Well, wait a minute. I, I, you just made a major behavior. I got guys that are doubling down trying to make up for lost time. Oh, absolutely. How about this? The government allows you to borrow your money out of your 401k for your kid's college because you didn't have the gumption or the will or the plan to put it away. So you're taking it away from your retirement mm -hmm. to fund their college, and then they're coming out and getting three jobs because they can't get one good one. Well, I heard you say before, it says, you know, you say to a lot of consumers in your public speaking, can you afford to lose money? Correct. And I'd say anybody, and I'm just going to be a little baby boomer here for a moment, I'd say my crowd and my baby boomer brethren, we can't afford to lose them nothing anymore. Correct. That hit was devastating. And by the way, on top of it came the housing debacle. So we got two hits. And I think we're barely recovering to par on either one of them. Yeah, but how can we ignore the fact now that student loans of mm. our American children mm. have surpassed the combination of car loans, and we see cars everywhere, mm -hmm. right? We see cars everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
and credit cards. Now think about that. Credit card and automobile loans tied together have been lapped, mm -hmm. have been passed mm -hmm. by student loan debts. Now we put that in, you've got the perfect triangle for disaster. I think of her name, I think it's the, 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 sec, the Secretary of Education Voss, I think is her name. Okay. Uh, she, she, I just saw an article that says she now is saddled with the 1.3 trillion student loan to deal with. And I'm going, deal with? You took out a loan. That's your problem. And you're not going to go back to government and tell them what? We're going to forgive all this? That means the taxpayer is going to wind up doing it. So here we have people going to get an education so they can get a good job. They can't even get a good job to pay back their, some of these kids are got a six-figure tuition bill. They've been living on cards, loans. Steve, you're looking yeah. at the wrong guy. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, our consumer, most of the traffic I get inside is, Steve, I'm up against it. And most of the boomers traffic that I get, I've been paying for my father and mother's LTC, their long-term care costs. Sure. On my kids' tuition. I haven't had time to retire my mortgage. We will be the first generation boomers that have not retired their mortgage when they enter oh, I retirement. Get it. Wow. But the topic is about safety. Right. And so if you're building any kind of an investment portfolio, you know, you, by the way, when you put your money in the bank, you're already losing money. Let, let's not forget that. Point oh 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 mm. oh 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 one uh, against, uh, say, 2% inflation, you're already losing. And what you did get, you got to pay taxes on it. Mm -hmm. So safety, look at your choices. One not of the, much. One of the cool words that I enjoy with my clients is like when we talk about mm -hmm. an idea, we're yahooing, y a h o o, and I'm saying like you're ready to smile, and I go, you know what we're doing? We're yahooing about your options, about safety. Well, what do you mean yahoo? You always have other options, but to talk about always have other options means you have to plan. You need to put safety back into your money when you get it. Okay. You need to do that. Okay. Now you just said. You know, now you gotta. Now we have to explain it. I believe your safety principle. I believe in that 100%. Sure. The CDs aren't paying jack. I think we're at yeah. a buck 29 right now for a five. Oh, I'm sorry. We're probably at about two and a quarter for a five-year lockdown on a CD. That's and then put in inflation and my taxes on top of it. I'm losing. Exactly. I, I get it. What are the alternatives? Well, I, I, before I get right in, I feel you moving in on me on this, mm -hmm. and I love it. There has to be a factor like a colon where they're, you know, on each side of contrast. Mm -hmm. So when you say, well, what are the alternatives? Before you get into alternatives, you got to have liquidity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because remember, cash is king, mm -hmm. oxygen of what you're doing. But if you can manage to have an emergency account set up. How many months? A minimum of six. Six Preferably months, a year. Month. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Then one of the ideas that I think that you might want to consider are equity indexed annuities. Mm -hmm. And I know coming up on our next yeah, segment, our next we're, we're going to be covering that because you have the opportunity of market gain. You have mitigated all losses. Mm -hmm. You can accumulate your money on a rider to accumulate mm -hmm. a rate of return. And you can watch your money grow year after year after year. And you have a little doggy door in there that gives you up to 10% liquidity mm -hmm. a year. So the more that you put in there, and here's the, most, here's the most exciting thing in the world. When you talk about one's retirement, everybody understands what another person says about money being gone. You know when you hit the sucking sound, Steve? Mm -hmm. You know, the money to let, you know, when you're down to the finish? Mm -hmm. With an equity indexed annuity, the rider is called an LIBR, a lifetime income benefit rider. Lifetime. Can you tell me anything legal mm -hmm. that when you hit zero, that you are still being sent a paycheck mm -hmm. for the rest of your days? I just lost my stepdad about three months ago. He lived to 102. Wow. His wow. money went out at 88. My mom and him had drew income from the insurance company for 14 years beyond zero. 14 years. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about safety, mm -hmm. having something with guarantees, fixed income opportunities mm -hmm. is a great way to go. It's hugely foundational, it's a cornerstone, that's where Jim starts in his practice. Don't forget to watch our next segment on index annuities, part three of our series on basic financial solutions. And keep in mind before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, Always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or your financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, The Name of the Game. <laughs>